và xây dựng cái này và công thức này dùng phát triển được nông sản này hay ngày này cứ chia ngày bí sách mà dương cứ dương celebrate mà rồi episode bao dương hay ngày nắng hôm nay cứ dương mình special guest bao dương cứ Sonic ok muốn dương chấp đá trong này nằm đây cứ Sonic cứ mất phép bao dương bao nhóm hay là đã hay còn cứ chia chuyện Philippines còn mà đây sọc mai này vui hay còn chấp đá mà sọc thảo phi đại chẳng là whole conversation dương đang thua cá son thì chia bị sang lễ hay dương đã sắp thấy thọ hàng khóm nằm bây giờ sầm rùa ở nền nông nghiệp anh vui đại ok chẳng vì tôi nghĩ này cứ tôi bàn cách control vì trong hôn nano sound sa ca thanh sóc và xin để ông đi thử ca JBL speaker rồi có microphone lõ lõ rồi có sound system lõ lõ này không ai mà thua ca chiếu nơi trong hôn nano non nano sound sa ca thanh sóc đã dương đặt link nơi trong description của này chẳng là tại sao là thay bóc ôn đại thọp màu càng bị po trả sạc bóc ôn nhóm cam ôn nó có hai chữ thọp đăng co để được sạc co chỉ một nhóm cứ đại cụ kia là cả ba hai như vậy này bị po chẳng hạn này thấy tại sao là mấy cái bài nó bị đo phần tai ở ca dễ những cái dễ chỉ bị sao ổn lên nơi lại to rồi đi mấy bạn cũng bình thường có đặt bao nhiêu bây giờ dừng lại vì nó được cái thay nơi cái lại to chẳng tới có đặt bao nhiêu để sao bỏ một lá cọt thì sao chỉ ổn lên được cái thay sao ổn lên chứ đam cho đôi nãy giờ ngày nó dừng mà bạn chơi còn chỉ khi về dùng nó mà video thay nãy đọc bài mà bỏ sẽ ấy hỏi có cái bài mình tích chặt thôi chỉ muốn những ca thọt ở đó sao chẳng là chia sẻ mà bóng bóng dưới đại học dốt ai mới sắp thay thọt bán hay khi chơi những conversation ở ca xong thì nãy nó cứ dừng su quát chìm sang lê tầm bây giờ tại dừng nó chỉ dừng bỏ nè nó dồn lại sao anh có thể vui on the show yeah thanks thanks shit man I've been like what because I I know you like since 2010 or 2012. Yeah, 2010 to 12, right? Like yeah. basically way before I know Nara. Nara, because, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they they both are musician and they play at my bar. Uh, I was a uh, managing restaurant mm -hmm. in the daytime, and then Sonic, uh, yeah, he usually uh, come and play. Uh, right, 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 right. So, same yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, but it's good because uh, uh, we know you are the one who uh, who who get us started on the astro photography. Well, not get basically more like Nara because mm -hmm. I wasn't really involved. Uh, yeah. But after seeing the image of the James Webb telescope, I'm like, fuck, I, I need to come back and uh, yeah, do mm -hmm. more. So uh, wait, how long you been in Cambodia? Well, I've been here for 12 years, the beach now. The yeah. beach, wow, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. But what yeah, do you do in Cambodia? Awesome I time. actually never have a proper conversation with you. <laughs> Well, I'm from a logistics uh, company, so okay. that's what I do during daytime and uh, my uh, regular, uh, you know, regular hours. Right. So I just do astrophotography uh, during weekends. Yeah. And especially when the sky is clear, definitely uh, me and Nara will be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. sick. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so as me, as uh, your followers and your friends, I will ask the same question as everybody wants to ask you. What is astrophotography? Yeah. Okay. Well, astrophotography is uh is actually two words, right? So that's astro or uh, astronomy and photography, like photography, like what we do uh, on daytime or um, landscape photography, birding photography, street photography. It's the same. So we're taking images. So when we say astro, we are taking images of the uh, night sky or any astronomical object so that's uh, simply astrophotography mm. so for example you're taking a picture of the moon oh, well just the moon itself okay so that's astrophotography also constellation like the orion like what we see now uh big dipper all these constellation and such or milky way that's astrophotography how do you get yourself started with the astrophotography well yeah good question so basically um, well, us as a kids, right? right? Even before, we are very, very uh, interested with astronomy itself, the planets, mm. galaxies, and such, right? It's it's my long time dream, you know, that I'm amazed also with these uh, objects. But one night in, I mean, one morning in 2018 when I woke up, that's about December. We noticed, that, right, within December, January, on the east, there are quite two or three stars that's very bright. So I woke up about mm. five o'clock in the morning and then I just saw on the window these stars. Okay, well, I know uh, these stars are not just stars. Actually, this means something. So I tried to look it up and then until I became interested, uh, why should I not just take an image of it? Before, I don't know about um, various equipment, right? Mm. Um, all I know before is just zoom it and then you will see it. So yeah, that's how I started. I researched by myself. Um, I tried to study what it is. So yeah, until 
I learned um, the basic equipments yeah. and of course the telescope, what I should buy. Then yeah, I got started in 2019 and yeah, uh, I started venturing other, I mean, uh, looking for other people in Cambodia who's doing it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's how it all started. Nice. For those who are you, uh, uh, Sonic and uh, Nara, they, they're both admins on astrophotography. So we're going to put the link on the description down if you anyone wants to join and, and learn more about uh, astrophotography. Uh, we'll definitely uh, have you guys. We also have a YouTube channel. Uh, what's that called? Tikrom Kai? Oh yeah, that's my channel. Tikrom yeah, Kai, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nara started up uh, to teach you how to uh, start your astrophotography. So if you want to check it out, we also put link in the description as well. Uh, Alright, so uh, Sonic, next question. Uh, how much equipment uh, are you investing uh, right now? Let's say the amount. I, I know. Uh, okay. <laughs> so when people ask me this question, I don't go with the amount anymore. Actually, even uh, Nara, uh, even if people uh, ask us. So basically, if you want to start with astrophotography, you may want to start with what you have first. As long, number one, mm -hmm. as long as your camera, whether that's uh, a camera, DSLR, or just a smartphone, as long as it has manual settings. Manual settings is setting manually the ISO, it's not automatic. The shutter speed, it's not automatic, right? And as long as you have a tripod, you can actually do starting astrophotography. So, and as long as you're on a dark sky, so for example, we go to Cape, uh, you know, somewhere dark, away from Phnom Penh City, Right? So yeah, you can start with astrophotography already. But going back to the question now, that's when you get started. When you're really interested with it, um, after using all these basic equipments, if you think you want it, then spend. Then it's actually unlimited, I can say. <laughs> because for us, it will be, you know, astrophotography is not just a single shot. It's not just uh, one thing, then everything. It's, it's like not an all-in-one equipment. Mm. There are values also. So I can say um, a good start, as I mentioned, if you already have the equipment, then you don't, you don't need to spend at all. You just need to spend your time going to a dark side. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next investment there will be, actually we have here, me and Nara have this kind of uh, equipment. It's a star tracker. Mm -hmm. This one is about, well, you can get it secondhand about 300 bucks or maybe brand new uh, 500, 400, 400. 400, 500, right? So yeah, the purpose of this, it will just follow the movement of the stars. Mm. So your stars um, will not, will not uh, streak or not uh, stay in the same trail. Right. Yeah. You, we know, right? The moon goes, goes from uh, east to west, right? right? Mm. Uh, all throughout the night. The sun also. So the stars as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want um, a longer uh, exposure in astrophotography, which will give you more details, then you need to have what we call a longer exposure. Right. Right. Mm. right. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, okay, maybe maybe you could tell us a little bit of how you use it and how you actually track it. Because I know there's a few apps that you can actually use to to monitor the the movement of the planet. Uh, okay. And stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, I think we can we can uh, go back a little bit on um, how to start basically in astrophotography, and maybe we can do um, another step or another level for our photographers already. I think we will have two kinds of uh, interested people in astrophotography. One will be um, already doing photography, mm. right? And one is not yet into photography like me before, and then just getting into a hobby. So good news for the people who do photography already because you have knowledge of the focal length, right? Mm. If your lens focal length is just below, maybe below 35 millimeter focal length, actually you can just simply use a tripod. And as long as when you shoot, your shutter speed is enough for the star not to trail, then you can just test it that way and then maybe just adjust the ISO settings and such. Mm. And by the way, don't forget you need to have an uh, intervalometer. You must not press the that shutter button <laughs> manually, you know. Yeah. So it must be remote, okay? And your tripod should be sturdy. Now, on how to find the objects, right? So basically me, I, I actually just use one app. It's called uh, Sky, Sky Safari. Yeah. Uh, we can put a link also yeah. later on how you can uh, download such. There's also other um, app, astronomy app also available, okay? And uh, what we can do is just check the time settings because the, the Earth uh, rotates, right? So mm. also the stars will move. So you can, it, it actually have a function to check 
what time will your particular object will be visible or not. Right. So that's how we check it. So that's the basic thing. So now if we want to have uh, more details, so that means we need to have a longer exposure because that when it comes now about uh, a noise input and a signal input. So for people who's into photography already, so that will be, they will know this definitely for sure. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a shorter exposure, like say five seconds, six seconds, you will only get uh, small details. So now if you use a, a, a tracker now, so of course you need to put one on a, a more heavy duty tripod. Well, it depends on your tracker how. So basically how we use a star tracker is uh, we point this, what we call a deck axis. So this is like a deck or uh, what you call latitude and uh, longitude, longitude, right? Yeah. Right. So this one should be pointed in Polaris or no North Celestial Pole. Because if you point it on North Celestial Pole, so meaning uh, on on a 90 degrees, or maybe maybe Narak can help me in the uh, 90 <laughs> degrees, right? <laughs> this is just an example, guys. So yeah, yeah for example, uh, yeah, yeah, for example, we're here in Phnom Penh, so we're about 11.3 degrees latitude. So 90 degrees will be here. So meaning our our um, on our perspective, your perspective, <laughs> uh, we the, the Earth rotates this way. Right? The right. earth rotate this way. In Singapore, normally they're on a zero or one latitude. Right. Right? So the so, earth yeah. rotates that way. Right. In Canada, they have higher latitude, so they go this way. Mm. So that's actually the first step. It's quite technical, but I think what we're explaining right now is uh, what you call this uh, a quick summary how we do astrophotography. Mm. So, of course, I mentioned 35 millimeter, right? This kind of tracker will be important now if you have 50 millimeter and above. Mm. Right. So yeah, that's a quick uh, summary how mm. we do it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. mm. And well, and yeah. that's the sorry, and that's just the image acquisition. Yeah, exactly. The 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 image acquisition is just almost 50% of whatever you're doing. Mm. Okay? Because uh, we also need to take um, what we call calibration frames. We can, uh, uh, we can do that on, on other sessions. And then we have what we call uh, post-processing, where we stack these images, right? And post-editing. Uh, yeah, yeah post-editing. And uh, yeah, uh, we edit it. Uh, we take out, uh, what you call this? We take out some, some gradients. Uh, we, t we, we, we smoothen out some uh, noise that still came up and yeah so just a quick one why we do stacking because when we do stacking right there is actually what i mentioned the signal and noise so signal when we stack is just stacking up it's piling up so it means we will get more details right while the noise noise is random mm. so in the stacking process the noise is just uh taking out because it's random so so it it it, it, it deducts it, so we just get the signal. So it means the more pictures we get, so the more details we get, and the less noise uh, we, uh, uh, we, we just maintain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite long. Yeah, cool. Wow. Smokes of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some of them were lost already. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, going to the next question. What would be the main challenge have you encountered since you started the astrophotography? What was uh, the biggest challenging? When I started mm. up, of course, the availability of all these equipment because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not available in Cambodia, right. right? The telescope and such, the mount, right, and the, the accessories, mm. everything at the moment, at the moment, we have to buy from overseas. That's the first right. challenge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, our challenge is just the weather. Yeah. I, 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 what, what would be the best time to shoot, though? I mean... Uh, for their perspective. Uh. Okay, the best time to shoot will actually be number one uh, based on what interested object you would like to shoot because there's a lot. There's of course millions there, right? Galaxies, there's... I mean, what we can uh, uh, see and capture ground-based, there are thousands, right? And there's the moon, okay? And there, uh, let's say Milky Way or Orion, so that's number one. It depends on what interest you have because there are actual different seasons. Now, second is weather, of course. Us here in Cambodia, we have dry season during the first half of the year and we have wet season uh, during the, the last half of the year. Mm. The best one, 
the best one December to January guys December yeah. to January because it's the transition between the wet and the dry and season dry, right. exactly. that's the best one yeah. that's the best one apparently that best one is not the Milky Way season so Milky Way is between February February to July or September so you just need to watch out for that when I say Milky Way because it's the biggest even on 18 millimeter you can shoot Milky Way as long as it's in your dark sky mm. so and everyone knows Milky Way so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so Sonic after like um, many years you have been doing astrophotography so may I know what is your favorite object well my favorite objects I think I can say objects okay yep. so that will be uh, there are two kinds of nebula actually, and these are my two favorite kinds of uh, both. Okay, so that will be uh, emission nebula and reflection nebula. Okay, so well here it's quite technical, but um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, astrophotography is uh, shooting astronomical objects, right? So basically, uh, what we can shoot, what's the type of object? So there is actually planetary and lunar. When we say planetary, that's the planets, Mercury. Venus, you can yeah. also do, but the most um, beautiful ones are actually Saturn and Jupiter, especially Jupiter. It's uh, very active, right? And then all the other planets, and then there's lunar. Uh, you can shoot the different phases of the moon, right? And another one, let's just go to our solar system first. And there's uh, solar photography. Solar photography is very special, but please do not attempt to do solar photography if you don't have the right equipment for it because we only have one pair of eyes okay and then second it will burn your sensor so not advice unless you have the right one so yeah next is actually the nebulae and galaxies right so that's what i mentioned earlier nebulae are actually uh, gas clouds so mostly that's hydrogen mm -hmm. hydrogen the element number one right and uh, oxygen very abundant and then next is uh, what we call a sulfur Mm. Uh, gas emissions so uh, I, I love to shoot uh, nebulae that is rich on these kind of uh, emission okay and then when I say reflection nebulae uh, these are actually like play these uh, you can search it up uh, these are basically doesn't have much gas emission but they are lighted up because of the the strong brightness of the star and then the dust clouds surrounding it nara actually have a recent picture of pleiades actually yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. that's very very impressive right so yeah galaxies galaxies maybe just my second so yeah because it's quite tough to do galaxies right. also especially yeah. now in Phnom Penh. yeah what is your best like best image so far well i think the best image so far from for me is the image that i shoot for two years Two years. Two years ago? For two years, man. You, For two, two years. So meaning two seasons. Shit. Oh, okay, okay, right. right. Why is that? Uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's seasons, right? right? So there's a Milky Way season. There, It's like, for example, wet season and dry season, okay? Yeah. So that was in 2020, that season, and then the 2021 season. It's what we call the Crescent Nebula. So the Crescent Nebula where I shoot with the total... Uh, shooting time or we call it integration time of uh, 34 hours Wow 34 okay. hours so 34 hours means not 34 hours that we're shooting uh, just long time every day right so uh, I am shooting one picture for one picture that's about five minutes so it means I take a lot of five minutes images and then stack them and then it turned out to be more than 30 hours so that's my best one yeah yeah yeah, uh, so Sonic, you, because uh, uh, you, you know, recently NASA has launched uh, with the European uh, Space uh, Agent uh, with the James Webb Telescope. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what is your impression on James Webb Telescope? Well, the James Webb Space Telescope is actually even uh, inspired us astrophotographers, even yeah. astrophotographers around the world, and even us, right? Mm -hmm. Because why? It has uh, infrared capabilities. When we say infrared capabilities, you know, um, it can go past in some other gas and dust right. that blocks uh, the view of uh, further astronomical objects, you know, more than a million light years away, right? For example, now the image of the Carina Nebula, that is just part of this uh, Carina Nebula. So you will see more details on, on that one. 
the colors that you will see there will be about some orange and blues but actually these are not really orange or blues right these colors are actually on the infrared spectrum also mm. but different wavelengths or different 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 gas type right that you can see from far away and then they just colorize it so we can see the details that's what inspires uh, us because it means there are more things to learn and then for us as ground-based uh, you know uh, amateur uh, astronomers we are more motivated on the beauty of the universe so we can uh, do as much as we can so james webb space telescope actually will understand us what is the real origin of the universe it will prove more of the theories from before right see uh, near uh, the big bang period so right. The, yeah, the origin of the universe. You're right. Actually, it does lead to another question. Because uh, uh, you, you know, uh, James Webb uh, Space Telescope is uh, they design it and they they shot it up, but also they also take requests. Because I know, like, because uh, NASA, if if you have a thing to shoot, you can actually write them a letter or write them a, a justification that which of the ah. direction they want to shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you? What would you want to write to NASA if you have a chance to oh to, okay. to get them to turn it to, to turn it on that right, okay, yeah okay, exactly okay. yeah, what, yeah. What, what would you want mm -hmm. well well first of all of course yeah before James Webb's telescope uh, launch they already have a plan and mostly right. the reason why that will be approved for of course funding is because there's already like research papers you know mm. but yeah it will be very fortunate for us if we send a request and maybe. If I will get this request, we'll actually just continue on the black hole of Milky Way, right? I mean, why, why explore more and then just, for me, uh, just understand more of our own galaxy, the yeah, Milky Way our, galaxy. Yeah, our neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah just that, just that. Mm, just, okay. uh, ex you know, deep into further the center yeah. of our galaxy and mm. that's it, yeah. Because for me, for me personally, I would want to know if Big Bang is the origin of our universe. Because mm -hmm. that's the thing, because I know they... James Webb Space Telescope, they shot back, but not in the beginning, the 13.7 something, but it was somewhere around there, but they didn't actually get to the, the further than that. Oh, and yeah. Because mm -hmm. that would actually prove if the Big Bang Theory uh, actually exists or not, you know? Well, yeah, that, that's, that's correct also, mm -hmm. because actually that's one function of it. The, the light that is being collected by James Webb's telescope it's actually like, uh, how do I call it in more simple terms? It's like the leftover photons or the leftover lights mm. that was actually scattered from the way back before. So it's 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 uh, something like that, right? Mm. We're not, uh, you know, we're not a professional astronomer. So I mean, all of us, but at least in a sense, um, I think it will open more, you know, uh, future improvements of technology. Maybe they can uh, also invent another kind of telescope that can really gather you know the light right. from the very beginning yeah. but as far as james webb space telescope have shown us they're actually near on that era right near mm. on that yeah 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 that's pretty much okay cool so sonic i know you brought some of the stuff on the table here uh i know some of this stuff but i don't know all uh could you tell me some days and then uh, maybe to our viewer as well yeah, I think Nara will help me with this <laughs> because he have most of it. <laughs> okay, the, the one that uh, we are showing here is actually just the basic stuff. So the basic setup is, of course, if you have your own uh, DSLR camera. So I just have this, and I am shooting more than uh, sixty seconds. So basically, I am shooting uh, one hundred eighty seconds. So that's three minutes. So that's why I need a tracker. So this one is a crop sensor, Nikon D five hundred with a 50 mm lens so i put it here so as i explained earlier this will move on the opposite of uh, earth rotation mm. so it's like gonna be yeah, doing yeah, like that really. right and then the purpose of this cute cutie scope is actually here on top the purpose of this is actually uh, we call it a guide scope so a guide scope also have a camera have a small camera here so what it does is it's following one certain star so the reason is because this one, the tracker, mm. also have error. So sometimes it will move fast, sometimes it moves slow, or sometimes have a little bit of error. So what it does, it points to just one star and then follows it. So if this will have some error, then this guy will tell, oh, you got, some, you got, you got quite fast. So it will send signal here and then it will correct. So that's why how we got 
um, pinpoint stars. So now, and the last one is actually this little very innovative uh, uh, device. Wi-Fi device. Wi-Fi yeah. device. This is actually a mini computer. So for computer enthusiasts out there, right? This is just a Raspberry Pi actually. It's a <laughs> Raspberry Pi 4. So it's, it acts like a computer, so it's very portable. So you hook it up here. You put your camera, your tracker, and this, and then you just click what target you want, and then it will go to that target yeah, that you want. That so, and also image acquisition. So what I have here, here is just a, 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 an old uh, version of this device, actually. There's first version. First version, right, the first version. Now I have actually the second second, second version. <laughs> I, 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 I nice. have the third one, but <laughs> but I have the third one also. <laughs> it was like yeah. all stock that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the summary, it's it's basically if you get serious with this, I will go back to Peter's question earlier. How much? Well, this one. Well, I hope our wife is not watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, without the DSLR, maybe eight hundred. Yeah. So this one is around like four hundred ish. Mm -hmm. And you need a tripod also. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this one is like, well, the first version it was, it was expensive at that time also. It's but like, now it's around about yeah. 300. Yeah. But you can get to 15 Taobao, right? So it's around like Oops. 700 already. Uh -huh. So and then a guy scope and a guy cam. Yeah. So that's around like another two or 300. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe a, a, around like one thousand dollars without a DSLR. Yeah, without without DSLR. Without, without, the, without the main camera. Mm -hmm. So with the main camera and the lens, maybe around like 2K. If you if you if you if you have a cheaper lens, that will be like less of money. Uh, if you have a better yeah. lens, better quality, that will be more expensive. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, that we have photographers already, and we don't have none photographers yeah. yet. Mm, so right. for the photographers already, you have yours. Then you can just you know just get these three things. Mm. But uh, me and Nara will actually recommend if you have your own lens, do a prime lens. Yeah. Not a zoom lens. So just prime lens, not a zoom lens. Zoom lens, maybe you can, you, you can try it up, but uh, prime lens is uh, much better. Reason why? Okay. Reason why? Because yeah, a zoom lens that. would have more complex lens arranged, right? Right. Yeah. If it, there's more compact lens, then it, the lens will move. But right. actually, you can lock the lens, though. Well, like you can lock the lens. One hundred five. You can actually lock. Yes, you can. Yeah. But but not forever, right? Right. Because you need to on the other day, but it will be on risk of alignment. When ah, the lens okay. misaligns, no, then right. it will produce a, a chromatic aberration. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this is for the photographers already, not yeah. for the uh, starting. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're very, very interested uh, for non-photographers yet, you can follow Nara. He bought a very, very nice uh, telescope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll show some of the images that Nara shot over at the end with his as well. Okay, so, because uh, I know earlier when you mentioned about yeah, starting these up. Yeah, these are not available, you can vote it. Yeah, no, no, exactly. No, no, no. Uh, so where would yeah, you yeah. recommend us to get though, to well, for startup? Well, here, um, for everyone watching this, I hope uh, in the future we will have this available in Cambodia, but currently, I think me and Nara have a different uh, 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 online uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's the right? company. If you, yeah, that's the common. If you're looking, like, if you're watching this video, just send your products to, to, to us. us. Review. <laughs> we'll be happy to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. First one. Um. Well, the the main leader, especially on camera control and this, and mostly camera affordable mm. cameras, is ZWO. So me and Nara, uh, we have that's our common uh, shopping list, right? But for other equipment that we have, um. The first one I had a lot is actually Amazon. From Amazon? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Amazon, yeah, yeah. So Amazon US. Amazon US. It takes so long to get here, dude. Mm, it's like Amazon two US. Or three months or something mm -hmm. like that. There's a local local courier actually here that, that helped me out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you mean like a third party? Third party, right, yeah, yeah okay, that helped yeah. me out. That, that'll be fast, but it's more expensive. Well, um, it's more expensive if you import it directly from Amazon. But from them, it's actually uh, more cheaper because they do some consolidation and stuff. This is a logistic thing, you know. But uh, it's more cheaper than okay. you go buying direct. But recently, there is some equipment that is actually just available in Asia part. So mostly, me and Nara buy either sources Hong Kong, okay. Yeah. Buy it directly from the company. The, the, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Or um, AliExpress. Right, yeah. Taobao. Taobao. sponsor us, <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> okay. 
Well, yeah, for it depends. For example, filter I get from Optolong. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah, Amazon. Uh, my lens is from William Optic. William Optic. Yeah. yeah, he got William Optics. Me, Ascar. Yeah, As Ascar. Yeah. They're different. So now, for everyone, both photographers and uh, on the really starting journey, um, when once you explore all these equipments, you can just check on the brand, and actually on especially on astronomy forums. On these astronomy forums, uh, they will say a brand name, and mostly these brand name have online shops. Mm. And normally these will have a shipping into Cambodia, and that's what I noticed. Good thing now in Cambodia we can do this, mm. right? So it's it's very open, and yeah, so just buy directly from them and just do DHL, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm we are not promoting that, but <laughs> oh yeah, it's. Okay. <laughs> no, they, they didn't I mean, know it's, it's a, for me, huh? it, it's my personal opinion, okay? Whether they sponsor us, which is better. But <laughs> request, request for that. Why? Because you got a good, a better uh, tracking of your shipments. And you can really see it. These stuff, if you get serious, they're expensive. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly. expensive. It's not, it's not simple like, okay, I'll just buy Micha, Baicha, or whatever, right? right? Mm. So it, you, need, you need to be uh, more comfortable, so that mm. way. Yeah, don't don't go for other methods. So mm. that that or uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have Astrophotography Cambodia. Yeah. So you mm. can shoot in all of your questions there. Exactly. Yeah. So the three of us will be answering your question, mostly me and Nara. Yeah. Exactly. And and Peter will push you. Okay, buy this, buy this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in terms of we having uh, these uh, great equipment, what is the best place to shoot? Like to use it, you know? Yeah. Ah, place in Cambodia. Okay. Well, here, believe it or not, I'm shooting in the city. Uh, 95% I'm shooting in the city. Well, that's because I have uh, astronomy filters, okay? But without astronomy, astronomy filters, I will definitely go anywhere dark. I may not yet say what particular place will that be good because I've been to Siem Reap, I've been to near Oral, I went to Cap, mm. I went to Kampot. Actually, there's only one common. Uh, there's what we call Bortle Scale, I think, Nara. We'll have a video on that uh, explaining the mortal scale. Just anywhere that is dark. So that's fine. Actually, no need if you go to the mountain, no need for that. But it's an advantage for our hikers. Because yeah. most of our, our hikers go there already. So right. why not just bring your camera and shoot, right? Yeah. So actually, I can say that's the best place because you're on the higher ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then higher latitude, higher yeah. latitude, right? And then, uh, yeah, I mean, meaning the low clouds are actually less. Right. So yeah. So anywhere, um, I can mention the lightpollution.info. Uh, that's a website where you can uh, see uh, the, the light, light pollution, pollution in right. the city. So it's it's a map. It's a map. All right. Uh, so Sonic, uh, you've been talking a lot about uh, shooting uh, astrophotography in Cambodia. What is your opinion on the neighboring country uh, on astro? I wish I can shoot on Thailand area, Vietnam area, or actually in my uh, hometown, Philippines area, actually. Mm. However, uh, when I started this astrophotography, it's actually just uh, before the pandemic, so I wasn't able to do that. So I just shoot in Cambodia. But if I will compare, you know, um, I gave a, a light pollution map, map.info, right? Light pollution map.info, it's on the link here. So if you can see, right, if you can notice, so look at Thailand light pollution, mm -hmm. look at Vietnam light pollution, and look at Cambodia. So meaning Cambodia, as you see, there's a lot of dark places over there. So that's what I can compare. We have a big opportunity, us here, we have a big opportunity to shoot uh, on the nearest place than the city. You know, like seven kilometers, 10 kilometers, there's a dark place already, yep. mm -hmm. right? Um, for our uh, fellow uh, photographers up north, or on the Mondalkiri side or the Kampot side, especially the Oral side, we've been there last time. Yeah, they're very lucky. Um, yeah, but I think if I'm comparing, um, this is my just personal opinion. Uh, I may wish that uh, most of the educational institution will be more active on promoting astronomy. Mm, yeah. And uh, maybe with the help of the government, because here, uh, Vietnam is very active on that. Thailand is very very active. Thailand also have uh, what they call NARIT. If I remember correctly, it's a National Astronomical Research 
Institute of Thailand, Thailand. Oh, Thailand right. N-A-R-I-T so mm. see right so so they're very very active on that why not Cambodia take a look at the light pollution map we have more dark skies <laughs> right yeah, yeah. All right, so I, I think we uh, we spent a lot of time discussing all this. Maybe we can do some part two uh, some other day. Uh, I'll be willing. Again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but in terms of astro photography community in Cambodia, what what what's your future perspective? What do you want to see? Uh, uh, it's becoming. What you wish to have like uh, to see in the yeah, uh, future in exactly. Cambodia? Yeah. Well, actually, for me. Uh, I think I see uh, everyone responding uh, quite very good, especially in uh, astrophotography Cambodia, right? I, I see a, I see it very positively, and I think number one, what just we, what we just really need is actually uh, better weather, and then second, um, I think we need people like Peter and Ra, right, to to give awareness to everyone, right? So because without awareness, no one will know. Um, and also, uh, if we make things more simple, then I think uh, people will know how simple uh, to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think Nara have a lot of uh, videos about it. Yeah. So please always refer to his uh, videos. Always watch uh, your <laughs> yeah. perspective. And also uh, Tikrong Pakai. I think that's our Pakai. Tikrong Pakai. Like mm-hmm. yeah. But it's still like we have some really good information how to get people start up, you know, right. with the yeah. astro Yeah, I just leave the information there. People can go mm-hmm. and watch. Yeah, whenever and then they want, yeah. whenever you have question, you always can raise in the group. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I see it positively actually. Yeah. So we have the place, mm. right? Uh, as I mentioned, Cambodia have better dark skies than the rest of the neighboring countries, right? Mm. Even people, uh, our fellow people there uh, up north. Uh, Let's say Kampong Som, Kampong Shenang, right? Around us, actually, they have. I believe with more awareness, we, we can do uh, astrophotography, right? Mm-hmm. We can even help educational institution, right? So, yeah. to, to make it aware, so... Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so, coming up to wrapping up, uh, what would be your last word to uh, tell to the audience who wants to start up astrophotography? What, what's a uh, tip or tricks you have for them? Okay. Well, first off, um, when when you think about astrophotography, most people will think that it's complicated. Yes, it is complicated. Okay. However, if you are really interested with one thing, you will research and you need patience. Mm. Okay. And the good thing about this, because the astrophotography community or particularly astronomy community is very active, right? Um, If you can see some blogs or forums or um, other uh, groups uh, on other countries, they're very active, right? Um, you just ask questions. So, for example, I think that's the reason why we made Astrophotography Cambodia. Yes. Because mm. uh, when we started it before, we actually looking for someone or some place, right, that have this kind of a venue to ask, you know, to share. Mm. They, we don't have, so we started it. So just ask your questions there. If if you get into this point also, as our community grow, then you will do the same like us. So uh, you will also respond to their questions. So I think that's how uh, the community will grow and teach and share together. Yeah, in short, yeah. we will die one day. So we want to keep this hobby. Yeah, 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 next, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's quite morbid. <laughs> Yeah. But but yeah, I mean I think what he meant is that at, at least we pass on the information. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. We pass on leaving pass your on. legacy to uh, another mm-hmm. generation. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. All right, so uh, Sonic, thanks uh, again. I think, uh, yeah, thanks again for having us on. Uh, uh, I mean you, no, having mm. shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. All right, I guess uh, that's wrapped up. So uh, Sonic, uh, thanks for having you on our show. Uh, I think uh, it's pretty honored. Oh, for you to have uh, us on the 100th episode. Celebration. Yeah, I'm proud of it. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. so so we hope to have you uh, again on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So. My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, 200. 200. Episode. 200. <laughs> uh, or you guys can uh, keep in touch with us on Astro uh, Talk Cambodia. Uh, yeah, that's like discussion place of Adobo. Yes. Space and, Adobo. Uh, yeah, you know, Facebook uh, page and uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And You're gonna a like, guy. And, uh, thumbs up. Yeah, he posts some really nice photo, and we also post some of the photo that uh, he did and uh, Nara did at the end of the video. So uh, don't leave it yet. Uh, we have some uh, upcoming photos that will incite you. All right. So the uh, here, I couldn't man mơ mà nó chop. Hey, you're gonna come to see you in uh, 101 episode. Oh.
Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Akun cerahan replay ya. Akun, yeah. thank you. Akun. <laughs>